women complaining that they don't sleep, they're tired, they can't lose weight, they're bloated, they're anxious, they're irritable, they're depressed. And the only tools that we're really given in medical school to deal with these things are drugs. But at the end of the day, most of the time, those pills are kind of just putting a Band-Aid on the symptom. They're not really resolving what the underlying problem is. For so many of these women, especially once women are over 40, an underlying hormone issue is the real cause of their symptoms. And if we can get their hormones back into balance, these symptoms just melt away. Hi, this is Dr. Ross Carter with the Regenerative Warrior Show. My special guest today is Deborah Matthew. Welcome to the show today, doctor. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. Um, so today what we're going to talk about is women's hormones mainly. So you are uh, considered an expert in the area of women's hormones, and you've actually, you actually do teaching as well in this area. So can you give us a little background on um, hormones as well as in this, in this show, we're going to talk about how doctors who are interested in this type of uh, in hormones and why they should add this to their practice because this is a major area. Uh, you know, m most patients are going to have problems in, with hormones, especially women. You know, it, it, so it would be very advantageous for you to add this to your practice, right? Oh, I believe so, so strongly because there are so many really common symptoms that as doctors, we have to address every day. Women complaining that they don't sleep, they're tired, they can't lose weight, they're bloated, they're anxious, they're irritable, they're depressed. And the only tools that we're really given in medical school to deal with these things are drugs, right? So we can give sleeping pills, we can give antidepressants, we can give appetite suppressants, but at the end of the day, most of the time, those pills are kind of just putting a Band-Aid on the symptom. They're not really resolving what the underlying problem is. And more often now than, than before, there are a lot of women who don't really want to be on prescription medicines. They kind of want to do things a more natural way. So they're not even always compliant with the recommendations that we make anyway. <laughs> and for so many of these women, especially once women are over 40, an underlying hormone issue is the real cause of their symptoms. And if we can get their hormones back into balance, these symptoms just melt away. And it's so rewarding to be able to help get women well instead of just medicating them. Exactly, exactly. And most, most doctors or many doctors are not real familiar with, uh, I guess, how pervasive this problem is as well as really what they can do about it. Um, many of them will probably think, well, I just send it out or, you know, may, especially men doctors. So I would, I would think a, a, a male doctor is going to be more like, I don't really know what to do about this, or maybe they won't recognize it's actually a hormone. So how would a doctor, how can they figure it out if this is a, a the, the problem is actually hormonal in, in nature? Yeah. So part of it is we're looking for patterns and clues, and we can also kind of um, look at where the woman is in the stages of her life. So for a woman, let's just say someone who's, you know, late 30s and in her 40s, mm -hmm. those are the women that are kind of edging into this perimenopausal time of their life. Yeah. And those women um, oftentimes will have menstrual changes. So now their cycles are heavier. They have a lot more PMS. The PMS can last for like a week or 10 days or two weeks and be really disruptive. Um, or they'll have symptoms that get a lot worse before their period and then better after. So a really telltale sign that these you know, things are hormonal is that they feel really crummy the week before their period, but the week after their period, they feel perfectly fine. And so whichever day they happen to be in your office, you're gonna get one version, which is maybe a crabby, exasperated, desperate woman, versus if you get them on their good week, they're happy and you know they, they seem fine. So if it changes based on their cycle, that's a big clue. And then of course, a lot of times for these women, they don't have regular cycles. And a lot of these women, because they had menstrual issues 
from their underlying hormonal imbalances, they may have already had a hysterectomy or an ablation, or maybe they have an IUD. So they don't really have regular periods to notify, you know, what's going on in their cycle, which can make it confusing. But if they've had some of those things, if they've had issues with their cycles, that's a clue that the hormone issue is still there. They just don't have to deal with the bleeding anymore. Once women are starting to go through menopause, you know, then sometimes things can get even worse. So when women are in their 50s, they don't have to just have hot flashes. You know, when women come in and they got hot flashes and their, you know, their armpits are, you know, they're dripping, like that's miserable. It's, I have women who are, you know, like bank executives and they'll be sitting at the table with all the male executives and they're fanning and, you know, it's, it's miserable. Women hate it. But if that was the only thing they had to put up with, unless it was really severe, they would get over it. The challenge though is not even, all women don't even have hot flashes. So hot flashes are not even the worst thing. It's the brain fog. It's the memory that fails them and they got to have sticky notes for their sticky notes and write everything down. And they're worried they got Alzheimer's um, and they're tired and they're gaining weight. And then they get the sexual dysfunction, the vaginal dryness and the pain and putting a dab of estrogen cream vaginally can make a difference, but it doesn't solve all the rest of their problems. So we want to really listen to their symptoms, be familiar with the fact that hormone changes don't just cause hot flashes and vaginal dryness. They cause mood, memory, sleep, changes in in muscle mass, in skin tone, in urinary tract health, in so many aspects of a woman's life. So if she's coming in and she's got a whole list of symptoms, then this is sometimes something that we really need to be considering. Got it. So so when a doctor is is in practice, how do you suggest that they either should they consider adding it as a service? Should they, or just relate it to someone that may, that may be already an expert in this? Do you think, is this, so a doctor's trying to say, well, is this something I need to learn myself or should I just send this to somebody else? Uh, how does a doctor decide which, which way to go? Yeah, that's a good question. I guess what I would say is if this is something of interest to you, like if this is fascinating and you would love to learn more and, and understand how all of this works, then by all means, add this to your practice. I mean, you can help people. It's so rewarding. On the other hand, if you think, oh, you know, I don't know. I, I have gynecologists who refer patients to me because as gynecologists, they don't want to deal with the hormonal women. You know, they'll do their pap smears and their hysterectomy. They don't want to deal with this emotional stuff. Right. So I, I guess, you know, it's a personal decision whether this sounds exciting and fascinating or whether this is like, uh, and then in that case, you can send it to somebody else. Good answer. I like that. So, so if, if somebody, let's say they're, they're maybe new in practice or they want to add this as another service to their practice, uh, I mean, uh, you know, I don't know. It's been so long since I've been in school. I, I, if, they, if they don't remember their classes, how, how do they learn about what to do with a person? Where, where's the first step for that? Yeah. So the, it, that's important because this what I'm talking about, the way that I'm talking about treating women is just not taught at medical school, right? We're uh, taught if a woman's having hormone problems, we give them birth control pills when they're younger or hormone replacement if they're older. And if they really complain a lot, we add a side of antidepressants. I mean, that's kind of <laughs> what our toolbox contains. That's, but, that's <laughs> but here, what I'm really talking about is not um, it's not just handing a woman a prescription. It's really more a whole body approach. It's a more holistic approach because we don't only want to think about like estrogen. We want to think about the whole range of hormones, which would be estrogen, progesterone, testosterone. We right. want to think about the stress hormones, including cortisol, and those impact thyroid and they impact insulin levels. So we want to look at the whole picture. Mm -hmm. We want to think about their stress levels, their nutrition, are they physically active because those lifestyle habits impact their hormones. Toxins in the environment impact their hormone levels. So there's, it, it really, um, really doing a holistic approach, I think is just the right way to practice medicine anyway. And all of that can be sometimes hard to squish into like a 10 minute visit. But if somebody does want to learn to prescribe hormones in a way that helps women get back into balance, mm -hmm. um, there are places, there are training programs that you can go to with the pandemic, everything is kind of going virtual. I, you know, things are changing right. rapidly as we speak. Um, but 
but there are a couple of places to go to. And in particular, the place that I would actually recommend for learning about bioidentical hormones, um, we're gonna talk about uh, a course, but an, uh, an institutional place to go is uh, A4M, the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine. Yes. Um, there are other places that do it as well, but, um, but that would be one place that I would definitely recommend. Absolutely, yeah. I, I, I'm a big fan of A4M myself. I got my fellowship from stem cells or with stem cells from them. So I like them as well. Cool. So if somebody, so so doctor said, okay, you know what? I, I'm, I'm dealing with a lot of these kind of patients. I want to be able to help them, um, you know, and, and they, they, and they're like, okay, I want to get started in this. They can look into A4M of course, which has various courses and training. And you also, you also have, uh, you actually have your own course, right? Right. So I am a medical director of the BHRT Training Academy, which is an online program to train medical professionals how to prescribe bioidentical hormones. Um, and so there's online modules. It's, it's um, a really nice, complete program. But and the and part of this is you also have access to speaking to um, a practitioner to you know, ask your questions and get mentorship, which I think is really, really important because you know you can you can buy online courses and you can read them, but book learning and real life knowledge is not always the same thing. So I yeah. think that mentorship part of it is like so so important, and that's not easy to find. Even if you do go say to the A4M or one of these other you know large places, you get the book smarts, but it's really hard to come by the the clinical. Um, yeah, it, it, it typically just takes you longer because you've got to find out the information and search it for yourself. And it's yeah. better to ask an expert and say, hey, am I doing this right? Or is this what you mean? Or is this, how do I handle this situation? And th that's just something that is a benefit to go with, say, your course, because you actually can answer those questions. That's right. That's, that's, a, that's a great thing. Tell, tell me a little bit more about how, does, how is your course uh, set up? I mean, is, is, how many modules and, and how is it uh, sectioned? Yeah, so um, the modules are broken out so that things are in bite-sized chunks, which is really helpful, right? Because if you get information overload, it, it, it's hard. So it starts off learning just about the symptoms of hormones, how to recognize who might have a hormone problem, um, it moves on to how do you test because that's a really important piece of this. We're yeah. not really taught how to test for hormones other than just the standard blood test, but it matters where a woman is in her cycle. I mean, there's all these factors that we have to take into account. And because it's a little bit complicated, many doctors just don't, all they'll measure is an FSH and they don't, they just tell patients, we don't do that. And right. I have lots of women who come in super frustrated because they've kind of, they've gone to their doctor full of hope. Why won't my hormones test it? And they've been told no. Um, so there's discussion about how to test because we have all these different ways. You can do a regular blood test, which isn't always the best way. We can do saliva tests and urine tests and, and capillary blood levels. And sometimes one test is better than another. So there's discussion about how you actually go about making the diagnosis in the first place. And then there are modules that talk about how to know like what is bioidentical? What does that even mean? How do you know if something is bioidentical? Because there are a lot of doctors out there who think that they don't know anything about bioidentical hormones. I actually have doctors who tell their, you know, their patients who end up being my patients that they don't prescribe bioidentical hormones, but then they'll turn around and they'll give them a picture for an a, a prescription for something like an estrogen patch which is bioidentical. So there's just this, uh, not an understanding of what that even means. Um, and then the, it goes through modules that actually explain how do you prescribe it? What doses do you use? How do you monitor treatments? Which ones come from a regular pharmacy? Which ones do you need to get from a compounding pharmacy? And how do you work with a compounding pharmacy? Because for most of us, we never really use compounding pharmacies or compounded prescriptions in, in a lot of just our day-to-day -day practice. So all of those things are broken down and spelled out to really walk you through exactly what you need to do. And another really important part of this yeah. is 
it takes a lot of patient education. This is not a 10 minute appointment where you just walk and hand somebody a prescription and expect everything is gonna you know, come up roses. So it requires the patient to be a participant and to be a partner and to understand what's going on. And so what we've included is a whole bunch of patient education materials so that you don't have to sit there and say everything the whole time because you, know, you may not have time in a standard appointment. And so there's lots of handouts and booklets and things that you can provide to educate women so that they understand, they know, they know when to call you, they know when they don't need to call you. Um, and the more you can educate women on what to expect, the better results they'll get and the easier it is for you and for your patients. So when you take the course, you'll actually get uh, brochures to give to the patients so they can figure out if they're having a, a hormone challenge themselves to some degree, right? So they have their own right. education. And, uh, and how long does it take for a normal doctor to go through this course to where they're competent enough to be able to actually uh, work with patients? Yeah, well, so, I mean, I guess it depends how fast you sit there and, you know, go through all the modules, but, but typically a couple of months. And, and we do have several months worth of mentorship um, as a part of it in order to make sure that questions are answered and, you know, um, difficult cases come up. And, you know, sometimes you just need to ask somebody. So, so interesting question. Um, have you had any female doctors that are taking the course actually start to, you become their provider? <laughs> and they're like, hey, I want you to help me with my own problems. Has that happened? You know, with this particular course, that hasn't happened, but it actually happens a lot when I do webinars. Yeah. Yeah, I just thought, well, shoot, you know, this is like you can, you can not only get a, a provider on call, but you can also learn how to do it yourself. I love that. <laughs> it's a great option. And, you know, maybe one more thing we could talk about is whether to include this in a standard insurance practice or whether to do this as a cash pay service, because that's a, yeah. that's a topic that's really hard. You know, like people have to decide. If you're going to do this in just a standard insurance practice, yeah. that's fine, but you won't really probably have a lot of time to sit there and talk to your patients. And that's why it's really important to have materials and teaching things in order to, you know, allow you to keep on schedule. Right. This works really, really nicely as a cash pay service, because if you do it as a cash pay service, you can block out more time. You can really spend more time connecting with the patients and, and getting a full story. And um, sometimes the labs that we, we choose on purpose are ones that don't, you know, they're not covered by insurance. Um, and so there's a whole skill involved in having a cash practice that we do not learn at medical school. We do not, we, we don't talk about money at all. We blame all the money issues on the insurance company, right? I mean, if it's not covered by insurance, it's their fault. It's not our fault. So, for anybody who's thinking that um, they, they're interested in a cash practice, having a hormone practice is a really great, um, it's a great service to offer because it's really truly helping people. And because you want to be doing something that you feel good about, right? You don't want to set up shop with some fly by night gimmick service that, you know, I don't know, fat melting or something that doesn't really work in the long run. Like after you buy expensive equipment and then you find out the results aren't that great. And then you don't, you can't feel good about, you know, taking people's money if your service doesn't work. But for hormone balance, it makes women feel better right away. It keeps them healthy. And if they feel good, they're more likely to eat their broccoli and put their sneakers on and go for their walk and, and have a good relationship with their spouse. So like you can save marriages and women can excel in their careers because they can think clearly. So it's just a really feel good service to offer. And it's and very because sticky. It's a sticky service, meaning patients, once, once you work with them, they'll, they'll want to stick with you. Yes, no, absolutely. I agree. And, and that's important because like we don't want to be going out always, you know, putting out commercials and selling our service, you know, like, ads and I mean who likes that right but when you help one woman she's going to tell her sister-in-law and her neighbor down the street and you know then she's going to send in her friends and so it, it it really is um it really is a great way to practice so if if anybody is interested I really strongly do recommend it 
It sounds wonderful. I like the ideas. Um, you know, because it's so important to be a lot more broad focused so that you can help. You know, I learned from uh, Tony Robbins. He says, fall in love with your client and not your process. So you need to learn whatever it takes to get this client at their best. So whatever services that require. And hormones is definitely going to be a big part of that. So I yeah. appreciate the, the information. The, the course sounds pretty amazing. And like you said, it, it takes a, 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 you know, a normal person a two, three months or so to, to, to you know, assuming that you, you know, you spend, you know, a couple hours a week, you know, who's got the time to sit there full time. If you got the time to sit there, you want to take a week off work and just power through it, you know, it'll, it'll go faster, but just like anything else, uh, you know, we're trying to space it out so that it's not information overload. Beautiful. Well, that sounds awesome. Is there anything else we should cover that I, that I missed or didn't uh, ask you about? Um, I suppose another thing that we do cover in the course that I think is super important is how to talk to women about the safety of hormones, because that's the number one reason if women don't want hormones, it's because they're worried about breast cancer mm -hmm. risk. And there's so much information out there for us to understand how to know who's at risk, who's really a fairly low risk. And so the benefits of the hormones like tremendously outweigh the potential risks. And how do you reassure people? Because you don't want to, you don't want to talk somebody into something that they don't feel comfortable with. But you know you want to be able to provide the information, and so so there's lots of that as well because that's a really important factor to cover. And wonderful. And what we'll do is I'll add a link to the people that are interested in learning more about your course and to sign up, and uh, then they can finally start adding and helping women with their hormones. I think that's a, yes. a wonderful thing. And and if anybody um, clicks on your link and signs up, they'll get a discount for signing up for the program. Perfect. How much of a discount are you giving? It's $100 off. Ooh, $100 off. So use my link and you'll get $100 off uh, the program. That's awesome. Well, Dr. Matthew, it was a pleasure uh, speaking with you today. Thank you for taking the time and, and talking with us. It was my pleasure. All right. Thank you so much.